This is Sonia T. Anderson at Yahweh Nisi Ministries. Today's book talk is on my book, A Place to Call Home, Volume 1, Understanding Your Identity in Yeshua Messiah. The table of contents are as follows. Chapter 1 discusses Yahweh's hard cry. Chapter 2 is about leaving the past behind. Chapter 3 is the Israel of Yahweh. Chapter 4 discusses walking in covenant. Chapter 5 is the camp of the saints. In chapter 6, entering the priesthood. Chapter 7, watch and pray. So I'll read the key verses from each chapter. Chapter 1, Yahweh's heart cry. The key verse comes from Exodus 25 verse 8. It states, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. That is Yahweh's heart cry for us, that he would come and dwell, not just among us now, but within us also. Chapter 2 is entitled, Leaving the Past Behind. The key verse comes from Genesis 15, verses 13 through 14, which says, And he said to Abram, Know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for four hundred years. And also that nation whom they serve will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. Chapter 3 is entitled, The Children of Yahweh, based on Romans 9, 6, which says, For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Chapter 4 is entitled, Walking in Covenant. The key verse comes from Exodus 19, verses 5-6, through 6, that says, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Chapter 6 is entitled, Entering the Priesthood. The key verse is based on 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, which says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Chapter 7 is entitled, Watch and Pray. The key verse comes from James chapter 4, verse 8, which says, Draw near to Yahweh, and he will draw near to you. So the featured excerpt is coming from chapter 4, Walking in Covenant, based on Exodus 19, verses 5-6, to which says, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Three months after the children of Israel left Egypt, they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai where they set up camp before a mountain. It was during this time Israel entered into covenant with Yahweh, and this covenant later became known as the Mosaic Covenant because it was given to Moses. The covenant was conditional. If they were obedient and kept the commands of Yahweh, they would become a peculiar treasure, a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. When Moses informed the people of what Yahweh said, they responded, All that Yahweh has spoken we will do. They said it, but they didn't mean it. The Old Covenant is a lace with Israel's failure to measure up to their vow. Israel didn't understand what it meant to enter into covenant with Yahweh, and today we still struggle with this. When you invite Yeshua to make your heart his home, you are entering into a covenant marriage. This covenant is sacred and is to be honored under every circumstance. Today's definition of covenant has been diluted and watered down. In order for you to understand the fullness of what it means to be in a covenant relationship, we must look to the Bible and reestablish the meaning of the word covenant. The word covenant is derived from a root word meaning to fetter, and to fetter means to be bound. Covenant as translated in Hebrew means a bond connection or association, coupled with the modern version of covenant which simply means an agreement. One can come to the conclusion that a covenant is a binding agreement. A covenant is a life or death commitment. There are two types of covenants found in the Bible, revocable and irrevocable. A revocable covenant is conditional. The obedience of man is required in order for Yahweh to fulfill his part of the agreement. If the covenant is broken by man, Yahweh is no longer obligated to fulfill his part of the agreement. The covenant Yahweh made with the children of Israel is an example of a revocable covenant. They would receive the promise based upon their obedience. The key word in revocable covenants is if. An irrevocable covenant is one where Yahweh obligates himself to fulfill a promise regardless of man's reaction or response. The new covenant that we live under today is irrevocable. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them Elohim. And they shall be to me a people, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, No, Yahweh, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that, he says, a new covenant he has made the first old. Now that which decays and wax old is ready to vanish away. Hebrews chapter 8, verses 10 through 13. The key phrase in an irrevocable covenant is, I will. 
In order for a covenant to be established, the initiator of the covenant must call or invite the other party to enter into covenant relationship. Afterwards, a commitment must be made by both parties to keep the covenant. Yahweh is a covenant-keeping Elohim. Therefore, he requires man to be a covenant keeper as well. In order for a covenant to be valid, it must consist of three parts, the words, the blood, and the seal. The words of the covenant contain the promises, the terms, and the oath spoken. They are various types of promises. The main purposes of the promise is to describe the type of commitment being made. The terms of the covenant describes the conditions under which the promises will be fulfilled. The oath of the covenant is optional, but if given, it confirms the promises and renders them unchangeable. The blood of the covenant symbolizes the life and death commitment being made. The blood is twofold in nature and consists of the sacrificial body and the shed blood. In order for the sacrifice to be made, it requires a priest and a sanctuary. The ceremony must be held in a sanctuary, altar, tabernacle, or temple where the priest can perform the sacrifice. The seal of the covenant consisting of the signed seal or token. It is a covenant. It is the seal of the covenant consists of the signed seal or token. It is a constant reminder to the parties involved that they are under covenant relationship. Similar to how a wedding band is a reminder and a witness that you are in covenant with your spouse. The Mosaic Covenant had the sign of the Sabbath day rest as a constant reminder of their covenant with Yahweh. Today we live according to the New Covenant. Under the Old Covenant, man had to approach Yahweh through sacrifices, body cleansing, and daily rituals. Only the high priest had access to Yahweh once a year on the Day of Atonement. A word from Yahweh was precious, and when given, it was generally to the prophet or the priest. See 1 Daniel 3.1 There were strict laws in place, and if you broke the Old Covenant, you died. When Yeshua shed his blood on the cross, he abolished the sacrificial system and gave every believer clear access to Yahweh through Messiah. I am going to pause there for our excerpt because that is a good place to ask you, have you received Yeshua Messiah as your personal Savior? If you have not done so, today is the day. Tomorrow is not promised to you. You never know what's going to happen from one day to the next. Today is the day to give your heart to Him and enter into that covenant marriage, which is above any other earthly marriage you can possibly have. So if that is you, remember Romans 10, 9, and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth that Yeshua is Messiah and believe in your heart that Yahweh raised Him from the dead, you will be saved, for it is with the mouth one confesses, and it is with your heart that you believe. So um, activate your faith today and choose to accept Yeshua Messiah as your personal Savior. Join me in prayer. Father Yahweh, we just repent for all the wicked deeds we have done. We repent for not living up to your standard. We repent, Father Yahweh, for not um, following out your Torah completely. And we just ask that you would forgive us. And Father, that you would help us to forgive those who we need to forgive. And Father Yahweh, we just ask that your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, will come into our hearts and rest, rule, and abide. Live with us, and, and um, we choose him to be our Lord and our Savior and our Master. And we choose to follow his laws, his instructions, and be obedient to him in all things and everything. And Father Yahweh, we ask that you would help us to walk out that obedience, that we would do so in spirit and in truth, that you would seek after us as worshipers that are in spirit and truth. In Yeshua's matchless name, the name above any other name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have prayed that prayer with me, welcome to the family of Yahweh. If you would like to purchase a copy of A Place to Call Home, Volume 1, you may do so on our website at yahwehnisi.com. That's www.yhwhnissi.com. Or you may do so at sonyatanderson.com, which is my author website. A Place to Call Home, Volume 1 is also available wherever books are sold. May Yahweh bless you and keep you, make His face shine upon you, and give you peace. Hallelujah.